Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to another uh, webinar where we are talking about uh, planning for your ICS fundraising. Uh, my name is Josie. Um, I work with BSO volunteers at the moment. And um, my name is Louise, and I help to support restless development volunteers and also private volunteers. Um, so what we are going to do first is we're going to explain how the webinar works. Yeah. Um, so the main thing is if you want to ask questions, which um, if you look, I think it'll be to this side, there'll yeah. be a section uh, where it says if you want to submit a question you can, um, a little green button, button along the bottom, um, so feel free to ask us anything, um, that's what we're here for and actually it's really good to hear from you guys um, about what specific things you might be worried about. Yeah, absolutely. And what you can also do with questions is if you see a question that you're like, yes, I want that answered as well, you can um, click to upload it. Um, yeah, so there's like a little plus one. Yeah, a plus one, that's right. <laughs> um, cool. So should we launch yeah. a video? So we've got a video um, starring our lovely manager, Isaac Jones, um, and he will be talking through a really good technique for mapping your fundraising out um, in terms of who you know. So let me just figure out the technical that one yeah. minute. Let's go into that. Um, and yeah, obviously planning out your fundraising and net figuring out your networks is really, really important. Um, so you can kind of see where, I guess, where you can go next with your fundraising. Um, so yeah, let's play that video. So we're ready now. Wow. Wow. Hi, and welcome to this ICS fundraising tips video. My name's Isaac and I'm going to take you through an activity today which I find really useful when I'm planning my fundraising. It's designed to get you thinking about all those different people who might be able to help you with your fundraising efforts. It's called network mapping and it's really simple. So you start with a big piece of paper and I'm going to write my own name in the middle of that piece of paper. Once I've done that, I'm going to think of somebody else that I know and pop their name somewhere else on the piece of paper. I'll connect those two names together and then I'll have a think about the ways that they might be able to help me with my fundraising. Would they come along to an event that I've organised? Would they help me to organise an event? Do they have any special skills or talents that they could donate? For example, they might be an artist or a performer. Maybe they work somewhere useful. So if they work in a supermarket, for example, they might help you to organize a charity bag pack. So I've chosen my friend Anne, and Anne works in a pub. So I'm gonna to talk to Anne about whether it's possible for us to run a pub quiz at her pub. But I also think that Anne would probably support me by donating towards my sponsor's activities. So I'm going to pop both of those things down as well. So you can carry on doing this with loads of different people. Do it with as many people as you can think of. Or you can start doing it with groups of people or organisations that you've been involved with in the past. So for example, I'm going to think about my old school. and also my family. I'm also going to have a think about my office, my workplace, whatever that workplace might be. I'm going to think a bit further back as well and think about any youth groups that I might have been part of when I was younger. Once you've spent about 15 or 20 minutes doing this, you should have filled up your page with loads of possible fundraising links for you to make use of. If you need any help with the network mapping itself or with coming up with new ideas, then do get in touch with your fundraising support officer. And we also have a great A to Z of fundraising ideas video for you to check out if you're a bit unsure about what kind of activities you could use with these networks. Good luck with all of your fundraising. Don't forget to get in touch if you need anything. And I'm going to crack on and finish off my networking map.
Yeah, so that was Isaac um, giving us an example of um, his networks. Um, so yeah, I guess it'd be good um, just to kind of go over that. So me and JC have both done RUCS ourselves. We have indeed. Um, JC went with? I went with Progressio uh, to Honduras uh, last <clears throat> the January just gone. Um, and um, Louise, what did you do? Uh, I went with Restless Development to Zambia, which was five years ago, uh, so quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, I guess like the different networks that I access with my fundraising, which might be helpful. Um, so when I was fundraising for ICS back in the day, um, I worked in a pub, so a lot of my fundraising was actually based there. Um, also, my mum worked in a school, so that was obviously a great opportunity um, for me. Um, and I did um, fundraising there as well. That was great great network um, and yeah what sort of networks did you use JC? so I mean one thing that I found really useful was um, going through work because obviously that means you don't you're not really taking any time out of your day so obviously I'm very lucky because I work at ICS so obviously people are quite supportive but regardless of where you work if you work in an office um, or if you work um, you know somewhere like a school where you've got lots of people together and um, it's really good if you've got somewhere like that to particularly sell food we always recommend that's what I did for my fundraising or one of the things I did was I did a tech shop uh, which was super easy to organise. I just had um, a selection of different snacks um, at my at my desk, and people would come up and drop some money in a pot, and you know that, and we probably about a hundred pounds or so. Which, for considering it was something that wasn't actually yeah. that much effort, it was a really good thing to do. And even though you know the people I work with actually um, you know know all about. ICS already they didn't necessarily know what my placement was about so it was a really good way of me telling people I work with about what to do um, I also did a dinner party which worked really well and again that was a great way of raising awareness because my friends just came over and you know I cooked some tasty food for them and, and asked them to um, pay what they thought it was worth um, and I also did a talk about what I was going to be doing on placement and telling them you know what that the money that that I raised would be going towards which is the continuation of ICS so all really good stuff um from both of us I think you know that, that we yeah. found that um I think it's really important to say just because you know we've done fundraising before doesn't mean it's not a challenge and you know whether you've done it before or whether you've never tried it it can be equally as challenging and it's just the main thing is just really important that you just throw yourself into it yeah, absolutely. I think as well as using networks, um, it's also really important to use what's available to you in your community because the whole point of ICS is to um, develop your skills for your placement. And one of those skills that you can really develop through your fundraising is community engagement, which is so important if you're going to a new community. Absolutely. Overseas. Yeah. Um, so what I'd say, if there's anything like a community centre, a school, a youth group, um, it can literally be anything, maybe there's a community event going on at the church, there's lots and lots of fakes and fairs on at the moment as well. Um, definitely use that as an opportunity Completely. to really, yeah, like develop the skills and like raise the profile of ICS as well in your local community. Yeah, and I can't stress how that how much that would make your action at home so much easier if you just keep your fundraising just to like closed away from yeah. everyone. When you get back from um, ICS and you have to do an action at home, no one's going to know what, what you did or what you went. So it's really it's cool so good. That. And actually, yeah. a lot of people for their fundraising will do things like talks, um, but in the local community, and then they'll be invited back afterwards to to tell people about what they did. And so it's 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 a really good thing um, to share that with people as a sort of before and after. And it's also handy as well because. You know, then you might end up joining that group. You might end up having a really good relationship with them and and doing activities with them. So it's just it's a generally good thing to do. You know, regardless of, of ICS, but it's obviously a really fantastic tool to be able to come forward and say, um, you know, I've got this thing that I really want to share with you and tell you about my placement with ICS. Um, so definitely worth doing. So sure. we should we have our next video? Yeah, we're going to play you another video, um, featuring the members of the fundraising team. And yeah, and then we will, I mean, yeah, if there's anyone who would like to ask any questions, just as a reminder, uh, just pop in your questions uh, down the side um, on, with a little green button. Um, yeah, we'll play that video now. Yeah. 
Um, so this video is basically getting started with your fundraising, getting a, a plan, <laughs> um, a plan together, and um, you know, give teachers some ideas um, to kind of get you started. So Ruth, here we go. Welcome guys to the second video in our guide to ICS fundraising. I'm Sarah and I'm Jess and we're here to help you break down a recipe for fundraising success. We know that when you get your fundraising target you might not know where to get started. That's why we suggest that you break it down into smaller chunks. For volunteers with an £800 target we recommend planning four to five different fundraising activities and our recipe goes as follows. You want to start with your main ingredients, this is your flagship idea. It needs to be fun, creative and have the wow factor. You're looking to raise between 200 and 300 pounds with this event. Here are some suggestions. School fundraising. If you can get your old school to do a non-uniform day for you by offering to do an assembly or take a lesson when you get back from your placement, you're looking at a huge injection of cash. Quiz night. Great fun and a good way to get other people engaged with your fundraising. If you do other activities on the side, such as a raffle, you're looking at raising between 150 and 300 pounds from each quiz night. Community fun day. If you've got links to a community organisation, running a fun day can be a great way to get other people involved and can raise lots of cash. Next, you want to add one sponsored activity. What would be a challenge for you? Or maybe you can use Dare to Donate. It's best not to have a cost associated, so here are some suggestions. The £5 food challenge. Spend five days with only £1 a day for all of your food and drink. Not only does this raise loads of sponsorship, but it also raises awareness of people who live under £1 a day in developing countries. Keep your Facebook up to date or even set up a blog. Give it up. Do a digital detox, ditch the booze or give up chocolate. Do something that you find challenging and people are much more likely to donate. A sports challenge. Try a run, a swim or a bike ride. Or try all three. A physical challenge is a really popular and successful way of getting people to sponsor you. You'll want to add a dash and a pinch of smaller activities as well, such as big sales. These are a popular fundraisers for a reason. Who does not love cake? Run at least two of these to raise at least 50 to 100 pounds. Car boot sales. Collect up unwanted stuff from friends and family and do a clear out of your room. You're not going to be there for three months anyway. Head down to your local car boot, 100 pound a pop. Swap shop with clothes, books, and DVDs. Get people to bring their stuff on a certain date and pay to take part in the swap. One person's junk is another person's treasure. It's worth adding a backup activity just in case things don't work out. Try to think of this as your takeaway menu on standby. And here are a few suggestions. But remember, they're never guaranteed, so don't rely on them. Apply for grants. Have a look at what local trusts or foundations are available, or see if your local school or uni has a volunteering grant that you can apply for. Remember to get your application in early so that you've got a much better chance of being successful. Community groups. Local community groups might be interested in hearing about ICS and what you're going to do, and they may even give you a donation towards your fundraising. Get in touch with your local groups to find out. Bagpacking at supermarkets. Slots are hard to come by, but if you can get in with four to five friends and pack people's bags for three hours, then you can expect approximately £50 per person. Remember, it's never guaranteed, but go in in person well in advance, and hopefully you'll be successful. Once you've decided what fundraising activities you're going to do, you need to set yourself two things. A target for each one and a deadline for each one. That way you know you're going to hit your minimum target by your final deadline. Thanks for listening guys and don't forget to stay in touch with your fundraising support yourself. <laughs>
you know, there's nothing you can do to to have it that night. Yeah. Um, so it, basically, you know, what we want is, is for you guys to have as many as ideas as possible, not just because, you know, all of those ideas will bring in cash, but it also means that you're not going to be stressed out last minute. And we are here to help you and support you, which is why, you know, we always recommend doing as many ideas as you can fit in, essentially. Um, and then, you know, the great thing is, is that sometimes people actually smash their targets. And if you raise like £2,000, that is absolutely incredible. Um, but it means that, you know, you're not going to be in the position where you're stressing about things last minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I think it's just like definitely worth just um, trying as much as you can with your fundraising. At the end of the day, it's not just like raising money. It's about what you're getting out of your fundraising as well. So and it does really help develop your skills. So that's really important. Um, yeah, if anyone, remember, if anyone's got a question, remember to like ask it. On Please do. Tab, tab. Yeah, on the, the little yeah. green button, ask, ask us there. Um, actually, yeah, I definitely want to talk about that a little bit in terms of like what, what you can get out of fundraising because it's really important to yeah. say that you don't have to necessarily want to be a fundraiser or like work in fundraising to, you know, get a lot out of the fundraising. And it's worth thinking about when you're first planning your fundraising, it's worth thinking about what you can get out of it, uh, what skills you want to gain, um, and how you want to gain them. And you know, thinking about that before you then talk to your fundraising support officer mm -hmm. is a really good um, way of thinking about things because it might lead you in a certain direction in terms of what activi activities you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's also really important um, in terms of like what you want to get out of your fundraising, of like picking fundraising ideas that you actually want to do. Yeah. And obviously we're here to help you with that. If you're kind of feeling like, oh, I don't really want to do a football tournament or I don't want to do a car boot sale, I want to like really develop my skills. I want to like look into doing like, I don't know, maybe trying to do a pop-up shop or something like that somewhere, like choose ideas that you're interested in. If you've got a hobby or something like that, turn it into a fundraiser. And obviously if you're doing something that you enjoy, the more you're going to do it. If you if you find cake sales like a struggle and absolutely hate doing them, you're going to avoid them. And it's really important to do stuff that you really are interested in doing. <laughs> and obviously get in touch with us because we can help you as well. Yeah. Sure. Here's a question for you. Sure. What do you think uh, you, in terms of skills that you gained from your fundraising, what do you think you gained? Um, so many. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we're going to say that. Um, so yeah, obviously, there's so. I think with fundraising, there's just so much that you can do. Um, obviously, we were saying earlier that community engagement's one. Um, just organisation in general, like having to manage money and then like meeting it by a deadline, yeah. like having lots of different events and leading those events as well is such a great skill to bring forward. Definitely. Um, if you contact community groups, if you've got presentations booked in, you know, that really helps with public speaking. Yeah. One of my volunteers recently did a talk at a primary school and obviously she had completely, she'd never really worked with that age group before. Um, and it was very, like she had to kind of completely adapt her whole way of speaking to a young the audience and I think she found that really really interesting and I think that's something that she wants to like take forward and potentially look into the future and she would never have realized yeah. that if she didn't do that and didn't have that like fundraising activity set up for the local school and then, so yeah absolutely and then I think it's just really good for creativity as well like I think organizing fundraising can is definitely fun like absolutely and it's all about I guess, um, work, I mean, you can get people involved, like you can do develop your team working skills, like your leadership as well. Um, so there's absolutely so much stuff that you can get, off, get out of your fundraising. And I don't know if you think there's any skills that I haven't mentioned. No, I mean, I, I would agree with all of those things. Yeah. Um, I definitely, because I remember just like a little personal story, like before I did any fundraising, I was genuinely terrified of public speaking. Yeah. The thought of it made me shake. Yeah. Um, it made me feel sick. And I did, do you know I did a few different public speaking things as I was getting into fundraising um and I it was terrifying you know I, what I don't want to sort of say is that I was suddenly the first time I did it I thought oh this is great I can do yeah. this now <laughs> it's a learning process mm -hmm. and that's something that's really important to say that you don't have to find things easy um you know we understand that what we're asking you to do is challenge yourself but that's what ICS is about and it's actually really important to remember that you know you don't worry if you find it hard accept that you're going to find it hard but keep going with it and and try everything um, and if it scares you normally that means it's probably a good thing to do from my experience because it's a way to to challenge yourself and and gain new skills that you wouldn't necessarily do otherwise yeah absolutely i mean if you don't if you never step outside of your comfort zone 
and you won't do better. <laughs> so yeah, and ICS so. is all about stepping out of your comfort yeah, zone. Sure. And it's a really great way to prepare for your placement because if you think that you're not going to end up doing some sort of public speaking on placement, you are definitely wrong. There will be all sorts of things that throw you out of your comfort zone. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's the great thing about ICS and, yeah. and preparing for that, preparing yourself for that um, and sort of getting a bit of practice. You know, not necessarily with public speaking, but other things as well is a really great way to sort of start that process. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is with fundraising is that we are well aware that sometimes things do go wrong, as we were saying yeah. earlier, like events sometimes do don't work out. Um sometimes like you might I mean this is for every ICS volunteer, this is usually a first time experience for them. Like a lot of people have never fundraised before, especially as an individual. Yeah. And obviously things will go wrong. The whole thing is a learning process. So it's for you to kind of like an ongoing development basically which is why it's really important to start your fundraising early so that if something does go wrong you've still got time to recover from it and we can help you recover and develop for the next fundraising activity you do absolutely That's really important. yeah um last chance to ask any questions um obviously please do pop, pop a question in if you if you want to now um otherwise just in terms of wrapping it up um, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, we are the fundraisers for VSO, for me, and Restless Development, and Prava, for Louise. Um, but there are lots more fundraising support officers, so you will have a fundraising support officer to look after you. Uh, please do get in touch with them. Uh, they're there to help, as we all are, and we've all done fundraising, and we know how hard it can be, and we know how to solve those problems that you come across and there are all sorts of different ones that we don't have time to go into uh, but if you are having an issue just let let your fundraising support officer know yeah uh, anything else to add um just yeah again just to emphasize that you guys are offered one-on-one -on -one support from fundraising support officers. yeah that's amazing a lot of organizations don't offer that with fundraising like this is great um use us <laughs> yeah here to please you. please do otherwise we'll just be kind of seeing that <laughs> So and, yeah, and lastly, thanks so much uh, for, for watching this. Um, and also thanks so much for, for being a part of ICS. Uh, yeah. We couldn't run the programme uh, without volunteers fundraising, so it's really important to say a massive thank you as well. Yeah, huge thank you. It's really, really appreciative of all of the hard work you guys put in. Great. Thanks very much, guys. Have Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.